If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as well as follow me and subscribe to me on all my other social media platforms. <laughs>
and we couldn't stop laughing our asses off at just how funny these songs were. And I believe this one features their one of their biggest hits, Beer, which, of course, that's a funny, catchy tune. But you also got, uh, man, trying to read the track listing on the back is kind of tough. Uh, a, B, C, D, E, F. ABC Death, essentially, the Jägermeister Love Song, Good Morning, which is pretty funny, all about trying to wake somebody the fuck up, which is pretty freaking cool, but yeah, even some hidden tracks, which is kind of odd, but hey, it's all about the comedy on here, but yeah, definitely check this one out. And then we get the EP, The Flesh Eating Roller Skate Holiday Joyride EP, where it's only eight tracks. But they do like Christmas songs in a comedic metal fashion, especially uh, Jingle Bell Metal. That was a good one. Never to go, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells Metal. Fucking shit up with a double bass pedal. <laughs> Just funny, catchy shit. Can't go wrong. This is a great EP, especially since it's Christmas time. What better time to jam this than now? So, yeah. The Flesh Eating Roller Skate Holiday Joyride. I can never remember the title of this. That's why I keep looking at it from here. But yeah, this is a fun EP. Next up, we get their sophomore album, Sandwich. Which, I actually really like the track list and with the nutritional facts, which is pretty cool. But yeah, this album was, I think, really where I started to kind of get into Psycho Stick. Well, not when it came out, but like couple years after i really got into them with the next album but this cool songs like caffeine where it's like this thrashy punky track that slows down and then gets sped back up also grocery store escape plan girl directions i love that song where it's just this track of a lady trying to give her boyfriend directions to her place but all he's won is the address to put in a GPS. He goes, give me the fucking address. Just give me the fucking address, you bitch. Give me the fucking address. I'm using a GPS. It's just funny shit on here. Beer part two. Do you want a taco was maybe my favorite on here. But also, um, 373 thank yous where they go through the entire thanks list on this album and like, 11 plus minutes, so it's kind of almost a prog metal comedy song, where they even reference the song Beer, like they do a part in, of the song Beer on that track, but even like outtakes, this is where you start getting outtakes on Psycho Stick albums, but then the last track we ran out of CD space where they do like a soft ballad, which is pretty funny, but yeah, Sandwich. <laughs> Now we get to the album where I really got into Psycho Stick back in high school, because this came out right around the time I first heard of him, and that is Vampire, Space Vampires vs. Zombie Dinosaurs in 3D. This was a big album for me and my buddies in high school back in that time frame, because holy shit, this, when we first heard, I think the first song I ever heard from them was off of this album, Because Boobs, which is all about worshipping ladies' titties, and why shouldn't you worship their titties? If you don't worship them, you're a fucking liar, or something's wrong with you. But I digress. Whether you're a man or a woman, you always worship the titties. So that song's basically all about worshipping ladies' titties. But you also got Hate Times Eight, which is a funny, like, anger song. Uh, sad Face, where they do a parody of Marilyn Manson's The Beautiful People and the Bed Intruder song with the Hide Your Kids, Hide Your Wives, and all that dumb shit. Uh, let's see. Political Bums, pretty funny. My Clingy Girlfriend. Oh, God. I could kind of relate to that because I did have a clingy girlfriend around this time, so... Yeah, that's easily relatable, but no song I relate to from Psycho Stick more than the root of all evil, all about going to the dentist and dreading it. Uh, numbers, oh, I can only count to four, where they do a parody of Drowning Pool's bodies and just made it dumber and better, honestly. And of course, the outtakes on here are fantastic. So yeah, this is maybe my favorite out of the Psycho Stick catalog. Then we get the follow-up for Revenge of the Vengeance. This came out in 2014, and this is another goofy album. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that, because every album's goofy, but 
Holy crap, this album was a worthy follow-up to the previous. Obey the Beard might be another one of my favorites from them. So heavy where they basically take a shit on deathcore and gent making fun of it and it's awesome. Especially the chorus where they say this chorus is nothing but growling. <sighs> Which is awesome. Uh, Dogs Like Socks is pretty funny. Um, they do actually a really good cover of Kenny Loggins' Danger Zone on here. Bruce Campbell where they do pay a tribute to Bruce Campbell. But the outtakes on here might have been some of my favorite outtakes across the board. Especially doing a version of the interlude H-flat heading into So Heavy where they're like, L Tune it lower, beyond reason, tune it to H-flat. There's no such thing as H-flat. And, yeah, this is just awesome, awesome stuff right here. So yeah, check this one out. Next up we get the latest full length and that is Do, which... I actually haven't checked out really much on this album, mostly because I've been busy, but from what I've heard, there's a couple of songs that have come out as big singles, particularly the songs Adulting and Tuesday. I know they just recently released a puppet video for the song Tuesday, which I gotta check out. But yeah, this is the latest one. And then as a bonus, we get the compilation and stuff, which is mostly like... Tracks that never made it onto other albums or like B-sides. And even more bonus tracks on here. But like, I would say the one song I remember the most from like the B-sides would be their cover of the Bill Nye the Science Guy theme song. That's an awesome version. So yeah. If you love comedy as well as metal with some catchiness to it, check out Psycho Stick. They are awesome. I want to see these guys live. Alright, back to some 2023 album business. Next we got Suffocation with Hymns from the Apocrypha. I did review this as well as the next album that I'm going to be talking about. But yeah, this album is absolutely fantastic. This, in my opinion, the best thing Suffocation has done since Pierce from Within. Even though the self-titled was very good and Pinnacle of Bedlam was great, this, I think, blows both of those albums out of the water. I love the production. It's still brutal, yet it's a bit clean, but they keep it raw. And just the fucking songs. Like, Seraph Seraphim Enslavement, one of the best of the year, I would say. But holy shit, welcome back, Suffocation, after six long years. If you want to know my full opinion, check out my review. And then we get to another one that I did a full-length review, and that is too bold with the enduring spirit now i know this one's been kind of divisive amongst fans like there are people who love this album and there are people who just don't like it because oh they went prog who gives a shit it's still raw and nasty yet yeah, done by arthur risk who did the production on here but he still keeps everything raw and stripped down but yeah songwriting wise especially later like especially in the title track the enduring spirit of calamity yeah they definitely show more progressive songwriting but it's more that like atheist and cynic style prog but they still deliver brutal riffs but they're just maturing as songwriters and exploring new territories so yeah if you want to know again you want to know my full opinion check out my review all right, and now we have a pair from Ulthar. We have both of their latest offerings, Anthronomicon and Helionomicon. I did check out these albums for the Under the Radar episode that was just posted not too long ago, like a couple of days ago as of this release. But yeah, these are two fantastic blackened death metal albums, yet they're pretty much like you put the covers together. It creates one picture, which is really, really cool. But yeah, basically, like, you get lots of, like, death metal triplet chugs, but also lots of black metal tremolos and even black metal vocals with some death roars. But it's like, here, you definitely get a lot more of the chugginess and the black metal on here. Whereas with Helionomicon, I talked about in the Under the Radar episode, it's like this, they got, like, a slightly crunchier guitar sound, and they get a little bit proggier 
when it came down to the songwriting because this is only two tracks this is eight so if you want to know full opinions check out that under the radar episode i just posted on tuesday if like i said if you are a fan of tomb mold blood incantation shooter and dark throne definitely check these out And now we get to the next five are all from the same band, completing the discography of Vader. And we kick things off with the one that was the hardest for me to find, but I finally got it. Black to the Blind, which was 1997. I ended up having to pay a bit of money, like a little over 30 bucks. But it's so worth it because, especially for the song Carnal Alone, that's like one of the best Vader tracks out there. And... Holy shit, like, this album definitely propels a lot of things forward for Vader. Doesn't compare to some of the albums in the catalog, especially the next one I'm going to show, but this is still awesome, awesome shit. But then we get to, if I were to ever rank Vader albums, don't be shocked to see this near the top, Litany. 2000 was such a great year for death metal, and this was among the best that 2000 had to offer. Holy shit, it's a short album, it's like 30 minutes, but holy shit does... Bleh, holy shit does every song deliver and then some. The title track, uh, Zephyr, uh, Forward to Forward to Die, World of Hurt, again, just top to bottom brilliant thrashy death metal that even at times gets a bit blackened but yeah great great shit then we get the follow-up with revelations which when darkness calls torch of war uh, the nomad epitaph top to bottom more killer shit what else can i say i know i'm kind of going through these quick and that's just because i haven't checked them out fully other than some of the songs I just brought up. But then we get to The Beast, which is another one I need to check out in full. Again, I'm just always busy with other stuff. But yeah, I'm glad to have this. And then the final one of the bunch, we get Impressions in Blood. This one I know a little bit more, primarily for probably the big hit Predator because that is one of the catchiest Vader songs ever. I think I might like the live version that they did, like, I think in 2007, I think. Better than the studio version, if I can find that clip, then so be it. But yeah, Impressions in Blood and All of Vader is complete. And now for the final album on this update is another 2023 release, and that is... Void Ceremony with Threads of Unknowing. I believe I did a full review for this one. If not, then that's a crime because 20 bucks spin have been pumping out some killer shit this year. This is among the best. This is great progressive black into death metal that just goes in all kinds of different directions that I wasn't expecting. So, again, if you want to know my full opinion on it, if I did do a review, check it out. If not, go through my Under the Radar episodes until you find a review of it. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for yet another update. So I got one final update before we get to stuff I got on Black Friday and Christmas. And those will be fun updates right there. But I got one more update in my back pocket, and it's going to be... Mostly the stuff I got while I was on my Alabama trip, including a bonus one. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Keep your horns high and your dreams wet.